So in this uh, series of videos, I'm going to show you how I made this. And what this is, is a sensory box. It's very similar. Um, you've probably seen them. They're usually somewhat two-dimensional in that they're a flat board. I work three-dimensionally, mostly obviously. That's kind of where I thrive. So I turn this into a sensory box. Now these are um, can be used for children of all ages to help develop um, motor skills but they become especially useful for kids on the autism spectrum in order to be able to learn in an environment more suited to, to um, their own sensibilities. So for example, and I've done um, some reading about autism. I've obviously knew what autism was, but in order to build this correctly, I, I did a little more research and um, from what I've what I've gathered is is um, people children people with autism have a harder time learning in certain environments that are more stereotypical what you assume. So, for example, in a classroom, it could be overwhelming because of the sounds, the bright lights, and the amount of people, and then anxiety starts to set in, and then the developmentalness of the classroom becomes almost null and void. So with a sensory box, it could be in an environment that the child is more comfortable with and they could learn essentially at their own pace. So um, there's lights on this box because in order to make this, this one is kind of catered to the, the, the little dude I'm making it for. So I was told that he likes lights, light switches, doorknobs and Velcro a lot. So in order to put lights on this, I made sure to make sure that they were diffused so they're not super bright, especially since they're LEDs. Um, LEDs actually hurt my eyes. So this, the top part that is a light has two diffused layers. Um, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I was actually going to film this. I decided to make an intro for it. And if the person that I'm giving this to says it works, I'm going to upload this video. Mainly because, like I said, obviously I know what autism is. I know people with autism, but I didn't want to put something out there that wasn't useful, um, that was kind of counterproductive to it being a educational instrument. So I'm only putting it up there, like I said, if, if the person I'm giving it to tells me they like it and that um, her son uses it. But like I said, I also was nervous about the fact that I'm not a doctor. There's tons of these out there. There's tons of videos out there. And for my design, it's four, five-sided if you count the top. Like I said, I focused on the things that he responds the best to. But a lot of them I've seen, and I'm not knocking those designs. It's kind of a, a flat board with lots of singular instruments on it. And for this, I wanted each side to be more of an activity where you can thoroughly um, kind of explore and play around with each of the aspects of, of the side that he's interested in. So this one is just light switches. That's, that's probably the, the most simplistic side. Then you have gears, just because I think gears are awesome. They're pretty easy to make in the shop. And the grid is set up in an asymmetrical pattern, so you could spend hours um, thinking of ways to, to line those gears up to get them all to work. There's only a handful of them on there. I think I have 12 in total. This side I designed with Velcro in mind is kind of like a Velcro Tetris board. So all these pieces are Velcroed in place. And since this is essentially a square, you, the, the possibilities of rearranging these pieces and playing around with them should be somewhat endless. And this side is, is based around doorknobs and opening systems. So each side, um, there's four units that each have a doorknob and a, and a different piece of hardware in order to get that doorknob to open. And then the top is a light board that works off of remote control. It looks, it actually works pretty well in the daylight, which I'm very happy with. But the remote control is nice because you can easily change the color of the board. But then I also thought it would be cool if it's left on white. You can use this as a space for tracing patterns, for laying out shapes and making silhouettes. So once again, I wanted the, the entire box to be something that wasn't just a singular, singular motion or action and more so an activity that could be explored. So I'm going to be posting the exact same intro for both videos. It should be two parts if I end up posting it, just because I want that message about um, 
the fact that I'm not a medical professional making this and that if I'm posting it, it's because the person I gave it to said that their son likes it um, is, is pretty important to me. Also, as a, I don't want this to get too long, but this is not necessarily the way I made it. It is not necessarily a DIY based project. There was some um, hand carving and some, some harder elements of wiring and electronics. So I was a little nervous about that as well. Um, making something like this for someone, the price point would be so high that um, I was also nervous about posting it and getting a request because that will happen on my videos. So I'm going to probably spend more time in this video talking about how to make it in a more simplistic way versus the way I made it to give it a more DIY vibe for people that might want to make it for friends and family versus going through the process of how I made it because you can make, this is all lap joints and, and mortise and tenon and whatnot, but you can make something like this with butt joints and it will work perfectly fine. So that was kind of my main goals for, for this video. So I was working on this box all at one time, but for consistency's sake, to make it make more sense, I, I chunked this into showing you how I build each side. So you can see for the side with, with the gears, I was able to slide the panel out and drill the holes. I started out with a regular grid for these holes. You can see how those gears line up. There's only two different sizes. The distance between the center points on these is different, but the teeth size of the gears themselves is the same. Um, I'll link the gear template generator I used in the description and you don't want to um, mess around too much with the size of sizes of the teeth at all because if you do they, they won't match up. Now this is the one side where if you really don't have a scroll saw or a band saw um, cutting these out would be a pain. You could probably do it with a jigsaw but getting them accurate would be pretty tough. So unfortunately this is the, the one side where, where you probably need a specialty tool but you could probably find these on Etsy or something like that. Then I just um, mounted a dowel in the center of them. I believe these, this, these were 5 16 inch holes. And uh, I put a washer in the back just so they're spaced out from the, the rim of the, the platform and they don't scrape. And then I just sprayed them with, with some shellac um, for, for durability. So you could see the, the holes I went through and I was saying in the intro, I drilled them asymmetrically so you could kind of play around with them. But basically it was, I think the bigger gears, the distance was one and a half or two and a half and the smaller one was one and a half. And I just went through and drilled a bunch of holes on that spacing. For the Velcro side, I ordered some Velcro off of Amazon with a sticky back. And I went through and just put um, one side of the Velcro, stuck it to, to the flat side. Then I had a bunch of scrap wood and I used a bunch of different species just so it looked cool. And this was very simple. I just went through and cut a shape and then cut another shape and then cut a shape to fill in the gap between the two. And this is what you're left with. Now all of this material started out at three quarters of an inch thick. That's because that's what it was. Um, I wanted to keep it all one dimension. And then once I had the puzzle made, I went through and stuck the other side of Velcro on all of the pieces. So I had these pre-cut. You just peel off the back, just like um, um, almost like a double-sided tape. And I can Velcro these all together. So this side was also pretty easy to make. I could flip it and trim off that excess Velcro and then I could cut the pieces out. So that means that all the back sides of these pieces will be completely covered with Velcro. So you can see I could just trim it. And then I could go through with a sharp knife and then just cut all these pieces out. Um, this tape actually worked really well. There's a couple Amazon products I'm using in this video. I don't have any loyal to these to these customers or anything like that. There's multiple types of these products on there. These are just the ones I use for people that might want to use this stuff. They're not affiliate links or anything like that. Um, just, just the stuff that I used. You can see I could just go through pretty simply and, and cut out all the pieces. And then that was the easiest way to, to, to get all the Velcro on the backs of them. Then I'm putting a 5 8 inch uh, hole in the front of those pieces. I did that pretty quickly and I didn't film it, but I filled that hole with a 5 8 inch dowel. 
So for the, the side that has all of the hardware, I'm a keepler, keeper of things. I refinish lots of furniture and the, the customers never want the old hardware. I keep all of it. So that's where the bulk of all this hardware came from. Some of it had old paint on it. So that's what, what I was showing using a wire wheel brush to get that old paint off. If you're reusing material, you especially want to do that because there could be lead paint on this stuff. And then I just had some old doorknobs. You can see the pieces that have a, certain latches need two pieces. Some of them need holes drilled in them, but that was the basic layout I had. And I had some leftover walnut veneer ply from an old project. So it looked a little bit nicer than birch veneer ply. And I just edge banded the sides and then trimmed them up. And these were the, the basic chunks I used. I just trim off the sides with uh, a razor blade. You can leave the, the ply exposed. I just think it looks a little nicer when it's not. Then I have these hinges that have a pretty strong um, spring in them. So they snap back, which is nice. So when this is vertical, you don't have to worry about these wanting to pop open. I actually have these because Amazon sent me the wrong thing once. I wanted partial inset hinges. So these have just been laying around. I don't use hinges like this for anything else. It's pretty convenient. So on these old style doorknobs, um, that center shaft just unscrews and there's a set screw that holds it in place. They're probably put pretty similar to what, what do, new doorknobs look like. And I just cut that shaft so that I could drill a hole in my plywood and then epoxy these doorknobs in place. That's how I was going to use those. I was using a, a hacksaw to cut that. I could set it back into the knob, set the, the screw, drill a hole that's a little bit bigger than that square and then just I filled that with epoxy and that's how I attached everything. And then I could go through and attach all my pieces. You can see that these hinges they shift a little bit once they're totally screwed into place so keep that in mind if your your puzzle here is very tightly fit like mine and then for this one with with the the slide bolt in there I could then mark it drill the hole and then have that work and then attach that piece. So this one I did each mechanism one at a time. You could see that the other pieces still don't have edge banding on them because that's how it was the easiest way to do it was attach it one at a time. Make sure they all worked. So for this side is where the electronics come into play. I found these really cool 12 volt switches that are usually used in cars and it was nice. They were very brightly colored. And then I also found these switches that um, correspond with the lights and then 12 volt batteries and little 12 volt battery holders. So there's a little bit of wiring involved in this. I went with 12 volt that just in case something went wrong, um, you cannot hurt yourself with this level of, of, of power. So this is the basic circuit I'm setting up. I have the red wire going into the switch and then the black wire comes out of the switch goes into the light and then another black wire goes into the battery completing the circuit. So that is the basic design going forward. You'll see I, I wired up a little bit differently and a little bit easier in the project. But before I did that, I could drill all my holes. I forget the exact size of the holes that these needed. I think it was only an inch. So I could line it up nicely, line up, line up my pieces. So I also ordered these bus bars off of Amazon. The way they work is this long grid attaches all the bus bars and then vertically on the piece they're attached as well. So when you have that long bus in there, the entire strip is electrified. Now what I'm doing here is showing you setting up the circuit. I wanted to see how many of these LED lights I could run off of one battery. As you start wiring more and more, if you want to light up more lights at once, um, what will happen is the LEDs will start to dim. So this is just showing that two work really well and three worked really well. But when I put the fourth one on there, they started to dim. So that's when I decided I could get away with using four of these batteries. Now I'm confident wiring electronics, especially low voltage electronics like this, I'm sure there is a much easier way to do it, but this is kind of the extent of my knowledge and that is that is what I decided to do. So I'm not against people putting in comments just for next time I wanna wire something, getting the heads up on, on pieces, but that's kind of how I went with it. And then before I could finish the wiring is when I put the clear coat on this whole piece. This is getting three coats of general finishes arm and seal. I had some leftover once again from another project. I really like this stuff. It puts a nice finish on. It's easy to apply. 
and I put that on all the sides and then all the puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle pieces and, and whatnot. As you can see, it, the cherry and the walnut especially started to really pop once all that was on there. So once that was dry, I could finally start assembling all these pieces. So there's a plastic washer on the back side of, of these uh, lights. So you can see I'm just screwing them into the holes and the flange will keep everything in place. And the switches will have a very similar setup. Um, electronics usually have, have these parts. So you can see there's a couple washers that come off and then there's a washer that stays on. I could put it in place and then screw it together and then these are held on there quite nicely. Now the wires on the, the switches were quite long so when I trimmed them I used the spare sets to wire from the negative to the battery. So this is kind of what I'm left with. You could see the bus bar I'm wiring one side of the switch to all the buses. I'm spacing them out so that the battery will only wire a couple switches. I realize that this is a mesh of, mess of wires. If you really want to um, learn how to wire it up the way I'm doing it, it's probably the smartest to pause the video and kind of trace the wires. So I'm putting one positive to this entire bus bar and then the bus bar works you could see now I'm breaking up those pieces so now those six screws are all connected the next six are connected the next six the next six and that's why they they give you that that uh, cuttable long lead so that you can break these up into pieces that's how I separated the voltage going to that bus bar but I was able to wire them all at once so now only those those sets of screws will be wired to one battery and then here's my lights. I have the negative running to the black one. I have the positive running to the, the red one. And now I can see if the blue working off of the battery I'm pointing to. And I can see if the blue and red one are going to light up. I believe I wired one of the yellows to this as well. And then the other two. So it was a set of two, a set of two, one set of three, and one set of two, I believe, was what I went through and then they, they all turned on. Though the yellow lights in general were not, were not as bright as the other ones. And then that's what I'm left with when I have all those pieces. Like I said, it's hard to see what's going on with all those wires, but if you pause the video, you can visually trace them and, and see how that all lined up. So with the lights working, I could go through and reattach all this stuff because this stuff got clear coated as well. And like I said, I had everything lined up beforehand, so it was pretty simple to just reattach it. But the walnut plywood looks just looks really nice once, once it's clear coated. And make sure everything worked. Some of this stuff um, shifted a little, so I had to adjust it. To finish everything off, I just put a half inch plywood base on that I edge banded. And then I could do the top. I originally started with these rope lights, which I've used before, but I didn't like the way they looked. And then I found these puck lights um, in a pack of six with a remote control that worked much nicer than the remote control for the rope lights. It was very easy. I just screwed a plank on the inside of the box, put those lights in, and then the remote control worked them through, through the lid. Um, I was really happy with those. On video, it looks like you could see the, the six outlines of the lights. In real life, it's much more diffused. And, and I liked how even in daylight, turning on the lights, which doesn't really show up on camera, were still pretty bright. So you can use it during the day with the lights. And then this is just kind of going around the box showing how all the finished sides work. I didn't film it, but you could see I, I ended up just screwing the lid to the top because I didn't want to have to worry about him getting in there and, and um, potentially getting to the, all the wires, but that's what the top looks like.